guys, welcome to Between Nerds Podcast. My name is Drew Philip Elias. This is my co-host, Mr. Aldo Mendez. How's it going, nerds? How's it going, Drew? What's up? Uh, fuck. Uh, two days in a row. Two days in a row now. Uh-huh. Uh, I had fun watching uh, 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 Tokyo Godfathers. This is episode 93 of Between Nerds. Right. We're traveling back in the past. Uh, we're recording on April 25th. You're probably listening to this on uh, May 2nd. Mm-hmm. So, uh, hello from the past. Hello from the past. Hopefully we're not dead by May, <coughs> May 2nd. <laughs> Why would we be dead? I don't know. You don't know what can happen in a week. Okay. Um, so we are talking about the Satoshi Kon film Tokyo Godfathers today, but at the beginning of this episode, we do want to go over some housekeeping notes. Uh, this is the last, well, no, it already passed. What? I, I almost said it's the last week to help us donate to we the Autism to Society of El Paso. We don't have but, to talk about it. Anymore. So, okay. So at the, uh, so spoilers, no spoilers for this nerd down. Unless, oh, what? Well, it, there's no under the nerd today. So, because we're recording on a Monday. Right, but we're... <laughs> so, if it's a new month, then that means we have to explain how the giveaway system's going to work from here on out. Yes, sir. Sorry, I'm, I'm just having like a brain blast because like, it, we're like, me just thinking about two weeks into the future is like really hard for me right now. <laughs> <laughs> and so... Uh, because it's the first episode for the month of May, we need to explain the, to you that to enter into our May giveaway, you have to leave a five-star written review on Apple Podcasts, or you can be a subscriber on YouTube, and if you've commented on a YouTube video in that past month, so for the month of May, then you can win some free stuff. We'll we'll get you a giveaway that's handpicked to be your favorite nerd stuff you like dragon ball z we'll get you dragon ball z you like jojo's bizarre adventure we'll get you jojo's bizarre adventure and it, it doesn't have to be a figure like if we were to find anything else like maybe a fucking mug or maybe something cool like yeah, yeah. a water a water fucking Jug water yeah. bottle yeah yeah some shit like that we'll get that shit to you yeah yeah so one lucky person uh would win that at the end of the month of may but keep in mind that if we only have two entries mm-hmm. There's like a 50-50 chance you could win. You know who who has a pretty good selection of nerdy, like just weird shit, trinkets mm. and stuff? Uh, Hobby Lobby. What? Why? Yeah, they the, have a the lot Christian of... The Christian craft store? They have a lot of nerdy shit, like video game stuff and like Nintendos and and, and, and they have a, uh, like Marvel shit, Marvel, really good Marvel posters, like comic book posters, like some other posters. It's crazy. I didn't even realize that. For decor, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. not a sponsor, De- but yeah. Decorating tips here between nerds. <laughs> Decorating tips. Hit up Aldo. Hell yeah. hey, Oh, and to that point, if you want to hit up Aldo, you can hit us up on all of our social media handles or uh, at Between Nerds. I'm talking Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. Or if you want to message us directly, you can email us at BetweenNerdsPodcast at gmail.com. Importantly, uh, YouTube, you know, just like us and subscribe. And you can also leave comments in there, and that's how you'll be uh, put in uh, the fucking giveaway. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, God, I-, I think we can finally get into it. Yeah, I know. I was... And you know what? I, I-, I was dreading to... to having to do like the hashtag thing i was mm-hmm. like oh fuck we have to do it again and then and then we don't have to do it and then we don't have to do it that's crazy <laughs> uh but yeah uh tokyo godfathers dude uh we are out of our our sports month yeah so watching tokyo godfathers it was kind of crazy yeah five minutes in fucking baby finding baby in the trash can yeah it's a it feels more so we we were just bitching yesterday slash last week about how um megalobox wants to sometimes remind you that there's like a social component to like boxing gambling and there's drug addicts and homelessness and stuff like that but it never actually in like goes into it more and it seems Mm -hmm. super like cheap that it's mentioned at all Mm -hmm. tokyo godfathers is a satoshi kone original film that is a Christmas movie, sort of. It, it is. It is, absolutely. Cause it's a Christmas New Year's story, yeah. Yeah, the the the, the movie starts off with, uh, you know, the choir going ham on the in church. And, you know, baby Jesus it up. 
Mm-hmm. And like, there's some preacher there too, being like, "God loves you." Blah, I think blah, they're blah. in church. Yeah. Oh, it, yeah, yeah. They're at like a soup kitchen. That's like yeah. That's being like held by usually that's what usually happens like in Christmas. You know, Christmas night, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, like in America. Yep. Are you asking me? Yeah, no, I'm just saying. <laughs> hey, I, American, can you answer this question for me? <laughs> I don't celebrate. I don't celebrate American Christmas. I celebrate the American way, which is we parted the day before. Same thing. Yeah. Anyways, we're getting besides the point. Um, so it's Christmas. Christmas. And we're following three homeless people. We're following like an old, well, like upper middle aged, drunk. We're following a trans woman. Mm-hmm. Like a, like like she's like a whole on drag queen kind of, mm-hmm. and uh, a child like a minor like somebody that's supposed to be in like middle school high school, mm-hmm. and they're soup kitchen kind of thing right? Yeah, and they're in the soup kitchen. I think it's I I, I like the tone it starts off on, because it reminds me of like um, what does it remind me of? It reminds me of like, oh like. What was that super, like, artsy movie that was nominated for... It was nominated for the Academy Award for Best Picture two years ago. It's about a Catholic schoolgirl trying to figure out where she's going to go to college. I do not remember that. It, so, mm-hmm. I bring that up because that movie reminds me of something like uh, Napoleon Dynamite. Like, this very tight, like, slice of lifey. y like a tight 90 minute mm-hmm. real world film following real characters doing real awkward normal people shit right mm-hmm. and that's kind of how Tokyo Godfathers feels uh there is eccentricities in, in in the way they act like their 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 what do you call that your their mannerisms mm-hmm that yeah you're right you start off with a uh, with this uh, transsexual man almost yeah woman. like a I mean woman like um like a drag queen being on the soup kitchen and she's talking to the to the server and like the and this is the first minute of the movie and they, they're hitting you with dialogue that she is well I saw it I saw it in the sub Mm-hmm. So I'm the sub. So I'm ha- I'm having to read this, and she's already having a conversation, a back and forth with the servant. She's like, "Yeah, I'm a woman. Um, I always wanted to have. I, I was. I'm pregnant. I always wanted to have a baby." And she's like, "How's that possible? What? Well, like, it, you're you're dude. It's crazy. Well, in the dub, was it was wild. because she was asking for two servings. Yeah, and she's like, "Cause I'm eating for two. Correct. Yeah, yeah. And they were like, "No, you're fucking. It was the drunk, the the, right the before, drunk dude that she hangs out with that was like telling him like, "No, you're fucking not. What mm-hmm. were you saying? I was saying with the servant, like the 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 girl or lady that was serving the soup or guy that was serving the soup, like they had a back and forth real quick, and like I said, this is like the first minute and a half uh-huh. that 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 happens. Like, yeah, I'm I'm eating for two, and he's like, how? And in the sub, they use like, hey, why you're just a homo, blah blah blah. Like, yeah, they use really like bad words, <laughs> <laughs> like, but like it it. it it, it's, it's like wild. insanely like like non-progressive writing but it feels more progressive than something like fruits basket like like so when people complain about like academy award winning film Django Unchained mm-hmm. a valid criticism is like they really use like the N word like a lot like like an obscene amount mm-hmm. but if you were a free slave, like shooting white people in the South in the 19th century United States, I I think the language would be really harsh against you. You know what I mean? And but like Tokyo Godfathers, as soon as this character is introduced, as soon as she's introduced, she has that little speech to the girl ser- serving the soup, being like how she identifies. So like right away, it's telling the audience this character mm-hmm. identifies as a woman. Mm-hmm. And then, but if that person really was homeless and hanging out with all these bums and all these drunks, like, people would be throwing fucking slurs at them all day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm like, that sucks, but that's true. And we haven't, we've seen homeless people a couple of times uh, uh, put into anime. We've seen it. Joe and Megalobox was basically homeless. (laughs) Yeah, but like, like, maybe bum towns. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. What's the... Oh, you're thinking of, uh, um, not Horimiya. 
The one with the alien girl. Yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. We've Hina Matsuri. Hina Matsuri. Yeah, we we talk about we talk about Hina Matsuri. And these hobos are crazy. Yeah. 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 But like they're it, doing hobo stuff. Yeah, like they're yeah. like we're really watching them like go home to their in cardboard Tokyo. to their cardboard yeah. boxes in Tokyo. It's snowing. It's like it's real and it's mm-hmm. crazy because in such like a short amount of time, you feel like you understand so much about these characters already. already. Absolutely, because they're like, okay, okay, this is what I, this is like, it serves you what it's gonna serve, uh, like what it's trying to tell you, like as soon as you get to the, through the door, mm-hmm. and, and you kind of don't, you don't expect the next like five ten minutes. You don't expect the entire movie almost. Yeah, but it's really cool because yeah. like the pacing is impeccable. I love it so much. Yeah. It, it's li- like, and I think that says a lot about like storyboarding and directing. Like, yeah. it's not like the characters are purposely ugly because they're fucking homeless. I get it, but like I hate like ugly character models. I hate it so much. But like the the backgrounds are gorgeous. Like even them walking past scenery or cars driving by them walking across a bridge looks gorgeous. Mm-hmm. But like prob like that's also a feat to directing. But the coolest part about this movie that's like such a testament on like satoshi Kone's like directing ability Mm -hmm. is the fucking pacing in this movie like it doesn't feel too rushed that i don't understand the motivation or like what what the point of this one goal is Mm -hmm. but like it also keeps moving the goalposts like yes absolutely pushing it and pushing it It, it, but you don't feel cheated as an audience you're like just keep going What, what happens next then and I was watching the sub, and at some point, I'm like, I'm gonna, like, cause I'm reading right, and I'm like, okay, I'm like, I might have to rewatch this. So I'm watching it, and as soon as I again, as soon as the first fifteen minutes, like, pass you, you're already you're already in the game. You're like, oh, okay, no, never mind, I got it. Mm-hmm. But this is it is going so fast. It's mm-hmm. going so fast. You didn't get you don't get lost in, in anything. There's no there's no drag behind it. Cause literally, I think it's ten minutes in. That they're dumpster diving, like they're looking for like literal food. Five minutes, bro. I looked at the. Time Was it stand. five minutes? In? Five minutes. The, so we've already been introduced to them, seen, seen their cardboard home. Now they're dumpster diving, trying to find scraps in the trash, and hear a baby crying in a dumpster next. Oh, they're looking for a book. Correct. They they're looking for uh, one of the philosophers. His name's Stoltz Dieski or something like that. Uh huh. Something Dieski. Yeah. It, because the the. The, the trans woman character is trying to give this book to the the high school girl that they... Well, she's like... She's homeless by choice, kind of. She's like, right. she's a high school age girl that ran away from home and, like, chooses to live on the streets because she thinks she can never go back home. Correct. And Gin... Right, that's his name? Gin, the old man? Mm-hmm. The and, drunk. Yeah, the drunk. Gin just... Uh, he hangs out with uh, the with, uh, trans woman. And they met this little, this girl. And it feels like it's going to go into a, like, before they before they find a baby, it just feels like, holy shit, we're literally following the homeless lives of these three characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, fuck. And then as soon as it started dumps or diving, they're having a weird conversation about, like, why the fuck do you care so much about that book? It's like, um... It's it's not your it's it's not a big deal. Then the dad starts getting mad, and because like the the small girl told uh, she she got mad at what something the something that the small girl said, and um, <laughs> yeah, okay. they say that right. Um, and they start walking around, and then at one point he's like, "Stop! You're what, not my dad." So, so which one's the little girl? Is that Hannah or is that Miyuki? That's Miyuki. That's Miyuki. Yeah. So Hannah. Hana but, is the trans woman. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And Gen okay. is the is the drug. Yes. Okay. Cool. And and there's a, a weird back and forth where the where the old man fills her up. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you're not a little boy either. It's like you. That happens later on, even though. That because, was right before the baby. Was it? Right before the baby. Be, and then right here, I'm like, holy shit, is this gonna be like fucking I think, weird? I think the language there, at least in the dub, was something like, she's like. 
I'm a grown woman, something, something, something. And then he grabs her titty. Like, now with this little titty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And she, like, punches him, like, in the gut. And he's a drunk, so, like, I assume it hurt. And she's like, hey, that's sexual harassment. Get the fuck off of me. Uh Uh-huh, yeah. Like, he uses really, like, weirdly, like, it's Five minutes in. It's not progressive what's (laughs) happening. But he uses very progressive language to describe how it's happening in 2003. Uh huh. And this is flying by, dude. Ninety minutes. Ninety minutes. And then you hear the baby cry. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so they see the baby cry at the dumpster, and uh, me, Hannah, had been describing with, at the soup kitchen mm-hmm. that like she always wanted a baby, mm-hmm. and it's Christmas night, and so she thinks it's like a gift from God. Like she's a little like bipolar manic. Mm-hmm. Hannah is, but like. Who is it that's homeless? And great and great animation to depict like cold weather too. Oh yeah. Because this bombs are wearing jackets, bro. Yeah. It, yeah. It's cool because you see like all their like layers and shit. It's yeah, weird. It, it looks really detailed. Uh-huh. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a really big part of it. And then so right away Hunter's like, I'm keeping this baby. And Gene's like, absolutely the fuck not. So somehow Hannah's like able to convince him that they go and then the next morning they'll take the baby to the police station and then they'll be done with it. But like Hannah gets a play mother at least for a night. Mm-hmm. And um God, I can't even remember like because as soon as as soon as I heard the baby cry, I don't know bro. Ever since I became a dad things change. And when it comes to baby stuff and kid stuff, man I'm like, oh fuck. That hurts. So as soon as you hear the baby crying, as soon as they get the baby, and and Hannah starts crying, she's like, oh my God, look at the cute little baby. She gets it, and she's like, oh, we're going to keep it. It's like, what are you talking about, you weirdo? It's like, we can't keep it. We'll have to turn it into the police. She's like, but it's Christmas. We have to get her something, and the baby's crying and crying. It's like, what's wrong? And then they just needed some food. Oh, they ask, oh. Uh, hold on. Something important happens there. So like when they find her in the dumpster, uh-huh. uh, Hannah names her Kyoko. Mm-hmm. Which means it means something. It means like future mm. blessing or something. It's it, it means something. Yeah. But uh, in it, they w- with the baby they find a note that says to take care of the baby, and they find a key to mm. a locker. After they take care of the baby, that's when we'll uh, deal with it. But like, what's crazy is J- Jin is clearly knows how to take a, care of a baby. He starts instructing Hana and Kyo and not Kyoko, the other one. Um, Mi- Miyuki, Miyuki? It, and tells him what he needs he needs to boil water he needs um, uh, baby formula and they need to get some sanitized bottles and stuff like that mm-hmm. and so he sends Miyuki the little girl but every like scene in this movie just makes you feel for like homeless people or people that are in this situation because like even her going into like a convenience store, everyone's staring at her. They make a point to show it to you. And it doesn't seem like tacky, like in like a super corny anime where you just see like a bunch of people just shifting their head. It's very like slight, like behind like uh the aisle, people like staring her down. People... You know and you know what it reminds you of? Like uh Parasite. Yeah. Uh you know, Bongyo's mm-hmm. movie? Mm-hmm. It's quiet. Poor. They're poor. <laughs> like, like the situations that they are and the situations that the animation puts these characters in, it is fucking ter- like terrible, terrible. Yeah. It's like people dead. are like, you fucking stink. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. <laughs> and like every other like and location, then, it's people ha- saying they smell like shit. And then Hana being fucking like, like talked onto like degrading. Because know? like she grabs like two things of formula, takes it to the counter. Or no, it's just milk. It's flat mm-hmm. out milk. And it's two things of milk, takes it to the counter, and the lady really gives her, like, a weird-ass look. Like, no sake this time? Mm-hmm. Or, like, because she buys sake for Jean. Or, like, oh, you're actually buying milk this time as opposed to whatever random bullshit or snacks they're just eating off of? Mm-hmm. And so they take it back to the baby, and that's, like, the next morning, um, Jean and Miyuki wake up. Mm-hmm. And Hana and the baby Kyoko are gone. So, uh, Miyuki has to, like, wake Jean up, and it's scary because, like, they've, this movie's tone is already established that, like, bad things can happen to babies. Like, a normal movie, a normal anime, like, there's just some things that are just off limits that, like, the main character's never gonna get hurt, a dog's probably never gonna get hurt, babies don't get hurt, right? Yeah. 
But, like, this movie establishing that, like, dude, like, nothing's off limits. Like, Hana being gone and me still not knowing what the fuck this movie's about. I just know it's about homeless people and homeless people might have, like... Baby? Uh, uh, a dead baby. Uh, might have, yeah. like... Well, she might be, like, bi- bipolar or manic and, uh-huh. like, try to hurt the baby or something. So, like, she's really... They, they see her snow tracks. It snowed the night before, right? Mm-hmm. Be- and the thing about Hana, too, that's really cool is that she makes haikus. So, mm-hmm. like, this one is, like, baby found in, in the snow, lightly peppers her face. It's really mm-hmm. cool. Like, mm-hmm. you, I'm, I'm not going to try to do it. But, like, you Ghost got, of you Tsushima? Like, yeah, kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, um, uh, Miyuki and Jean are running up to where Hana is, and she's just kind of, like, kneeling in the snow. And, like, what we're talking about, like, she's in layers of clothing. It's getting all wet. Is the baby getting wet? She's is just, like... Is the baby like, warm enough? Is, is the she... baby warm? And, dog, I thought they were going to walk up on her and the baby was going to be dead. Bro! I, I, for real, was like, oh, shit. Like, it's ten minutes in, bro. Is there a dead baby? Ten minutes in, dog. Is, is there a dead baby? And and the, the, the color... The color palette turns everybody really pale. Dog, I was looking at the really baby. pale. Everyone's pale. And, and then I'm looking at the baby. I'm like, is the baby purple? Yeah. Am, am I seeing things? Is Dude, the baby purple? I fucking hated it, dog. Because I'm like, the the dollar was some, something along like, come on, we said she could stay with us on Christmas. Let's take it to the, to the, to the police station. And then she says, there's there, there's no need for that. I was like, get the fuck out of here, bro. Get the fuck out of here. But fucking Mr. Khan, nah, he's fucking around, bro, because he, uh, Hana, uh, she starts starts saying, uh, I'm not going to give this baby away because I don't want her, I don't want it to be oh. like tossed around the system or people not loving her. It's which like, was a good point. Uh, which was a good point. Oh, and I did feel for the, and they were like, no, we, we have to figure out who the actual parent is. We have the note. We have the key. And okay, cool. All right. So, like, uh, Jean and Miyuki just trying to, like, calm Hana down. They mm-hmm. go to, I think it's a subway station. Mm-hmm. It, and, again, like, they show up. Everyone's just like, oh, they stink. Oh, they stink. And, like, they're so broke. Like, they don't. Th- these are the types of public lockers that you need to put, like, quarters into. Well, mm-hmm. whatever, like, a 250 yen piece yeah. into to, like, unlock it. it. It's, like, an issue to even get, like, four quarters together. So... They put them in, they open it. It's just duffel bags on duffel bags mm-hmm. worth of bullshit. Like, it's empty lottery tickets. It's uh, pictures of this couple. Mm-hmm. And um, it, it's uh, just like a... It, no, no pictures with baby, though. Because no the baby obviously the baby. is... Yeah, yeah. is, is it, it was just... It's a newborn baby. Right, right, yeah. right. right. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a day to, to four days old. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, and and it's a, if I know something about babies, ah, oh, dude, the first three months, everything's trying to, trying to kill your baby. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, no, I don't. Dog, everything. What like, is trying to kill your baby? Dude, that crib, the toys, the swaddles, like everything's trying to kill your baby. Like if you're not, you have to take care. And, of and, and see, with that being said, it's worse because <laughs> this is when Jean stops giving a shit. Yeah. This is where Jen's like, nope, this is already too much of a problem. Mm-hmm. Like all we have is this empty duffel bag full of bullshit and some pictures. We're never, never gonna forget who the, figure out who the parents are. Mm-hmm. But then now Han is getting more like we're keeping her, we're keeping her, we're keeping her. Mm-hmm. So they they go to they're walking through a cemetery because you know just homeless people walking around. Well, they go to the cemetery because they're homeless people. They know that people live offers. Oh, that's yeah. right. And then we're like, so okay. they're they're bumming it off offerings. And then I'm like, okay, like when I'm watching this, I'm like, okay, okay, I like it. I mean, dirty homelessness. It's like, yeah, let's do it. G- Gene finds a bottle. Uh-huh. Bro, they find diapers and and formula the, for a dead baby tomb. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, like, if Hannah's whole thing was like, no, this is like a beautiful, like, uh-huh. gifted baby. Like, I'm glad, I'm glad you mentioned the sake because I don't know if you remember what happens next is that they find a fucking mafioso under his car. Right. <laughs> so, but I keep talking about the cemetery, go, though. So, um, Kyoko means remember. pure child. Yeah. Thank you. Fuck. So, like, Kyoko being this pure child, she's like a blessing, right? So, like, if they just keep the baby around, good shit's gonna happen. Which, that's, like, the really, like, cool, cool part of this movie. It, it's it, the power system of this movie. It, it's kind of beautiful, you know what I mean? Just, like, this helpless baby that, like, you assume has the worst luck. Everything's just be- going Because she was it. abandoned in a trash can. The worst luck baby, right? 
just like all these amazing things just like the universe is just trying to keep her alive like no matter what yeah so like they find the diapers and formula what the fuck like uh-huh. so and not only that so they're walking away and Jin's still pissed he's like no we're not keeping this fucking baby but she's like but look we found all this stuff and, and then they just find some fat dude like on the on a hill so like his head's pointed down the hill his big ass stomach is squished under his car and he's like stuck so it looks hilarious it looks hilarious because like the moment like if the car's on a hill it's trying to move down but Mm -hmm. he's so fat it's it's just like stuck yeah it's like an old school like jetta Mm -hmm. almost you know it's on top of it black and he's just like 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 all red it looks like the 82 camry yeah 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 yeah. (laughs) and (laughs) and when they, I mean, they're just homeless people. They're just walking by. You know what I'm saying? But, I like, mean, they're good people, too. Like, I think that's what's cool. They're good. Uh-huh. So, like... They show up and they're like, yo, what the fuck is wrong with like, you? Like, Gene almost walks by and Hannah just, like, gives him a look. He's like, fine, I'll fucking help him. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, and they, like, push the car off. Like, it, it, they're bums. Don't get me wrong. They just raided a cemetery. Uh-huh. But, like, they're they're not bad people. Yeah. And I, I like that a lot. You know and, what I and mean? And the fact that the the, the 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 mafioso, I can't even remember what his name is. Uh, Fatboy Mafioso. Fat, fat so Fatboy Fat mafioso. mafioso is on his way to his daughter's wedding. Mm-hmm. And Fatboy Mafioso... Invites him because they just saved his life. Yeah, yeah. He's like, whatever you need, bro. Like, wh- like, well, like I can get you anything. Mm-hmm. And they're just like, he's like, come with me. Fuck it. I'm going to a wedding. You want food? Like... Um, Never mentions that they probably smell like shit or like look like shit. Uh-uh. He's just grateful to be alive, and mm-hmm. he's that's what's kind of cool. Like even the worst people in this movie are like kind of dope. And and uh, before we keep going, um, I was looking up the the sake that the Gin drinks. Mm-hmm. It's the sake that fat guy had just left for his dad. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's right. Uh, yeah. Oh right, because yeah. like when I said like Gene stole a bottle from the seminary, it's a sake. Him being on the, the it was, car a, it was happened, a nice, like, happened like five minutes before they got. There. It was a nice sake too, uh-huh. because Gene grabs. He's like, "Hey, like, yeah, yo, you left some good shit in the cemetery." So this mafioso had just made an offer to his dead dad. Oh, and he put uh, a on, bottle on the day after Christmas. Uh-huh, on, the day after Christmas. <laughs> on the day after Christmas, and then now we circle back to them saving the mafioso, and then fucking inviting them to the wedding. Super cash, nonchalant, and no. Nobody gives a shit about what well, he, he the gives, people there either. He gives them a card at first. He's like, yo, you need anything, dog? I got you. Gene looks at it, and he wants nothing to do with it. Like, mm-hmm. Hannah's taking it. He's like, yeah, for real. Can you help us find this baby's parents? Blah, blah. And, and the mafioso's talking. Yeah, I can do it. Gene's in the background, like, trying to sneak away. Like, mm-hmm. he wants nothing to do with this mafioso guy. Mm-hmm. The minute he figures out his name, he's like, oh, no. Fuck. I owe a lot of money to that guy. And again, it's, it's like... It, it's like the plot to um, every gambling. Squid Game, to fucking Squid Game, bro. Like South, like that one's about South Koreans being addicted to gambling and getting mm-hmm. in debt and shit. And That's this one's the same thing. Know. It's the same thing. That's so wild. like, what? So we're starting to learn more about Gene. That like, he has gambling debt. He's uh, he's afraid of the mob. And earlier in the movie, he, he tells threw, him he threw a race. Remember, he tells him he was a he was a razor. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He, that he yeah yeah that he was a semi well known pro cyclist. Oh, a cyclist, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, and not only that, when like Hannah early on is asking about his family, he's just like, oh, I couldn't save my daughter, and then shortly after that, my wife went with her too, uh-huh. and just telling some bullshit sob story, like, but always very dramatic. Always, always. Yeah. So so that he sees like the victim, so that mm-hmm. he gets sympathy. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, them, like, Fatboy Mafioso being like, yo, uh, come with me to the wedding, we'll get you fed, like, whatever you need, we'll, that baby needs a diaper change, we'll take care of it, mm-hmm. uh, come with me to the wedding, and, like, we'll, we'll take care of you. So they go, and they're at, like, the mob wedding. Like, they are at this ginormous, it's, it's like if Scarface's daughter had a wedding. Like, it's the Godfather. Uh, yeah, exactly. They're, they're walking into the Godfather. And then, dude... Uh, like the stories like this right here, bro. It's no, it's like that, bro. No, like we well, we just went yeah, okay. from baby and trash can. Maybe like, not this, but like this. It's, uh, it's going up and down. It's so, crazy. so wild, and it's just going up. Like it's just, no, no, yeah. But like at this moment, when they get the invitation to the wedding, me as a first time watcher, I'm like, oh, okay, it's this kind of Christmas movie. Things are going good for them. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh fuck. <laughs> 
<laughs> and, and then when I think it's like, oh, they're having a break. We the camera keep in, mind, it, keep in mind it's like 20, 25 minutes in. <laughs> yeah, and then the camera pans into Jin, and Jin is holding a fucking bottle, like waiting to strike well, somebody. He, he, so he grabs two. So they're sitting down. They're they're clearly like not supposed to be mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the drive on the way up there, a fat boy mafioso is being like, "Yo, yeah, I have to go to this wedding." To she's bummy. She's marrying this bum ass guy that works for me. I fucking hate that guy. You should have seen how mad I was when I found out that they mm-hmm. were dating. But then this goes into Hana while holding baby Kyoka, being like, "No, I think Jin brings it up." He's mm-hmm. like, "But, but she's happy, right?" He's like, "Yeah, that's the most annoying part." Well, isn't uh like some some sappy shit? Mm-hmm. Just being like, "Well, isn't a dad's duty to like make sure his daughter is happy at the end mm-hmm. of the day?" He's like, yeah, that's why I'm still going to the wedding. I'm still going to give her away. I'm just fucking pissed about it. Mm-hmm. So it's it's cute, you know? It's real. So when they're sitting there at the wedding, uh, the I, I told that whole story. So, like, when the when the, the son-in-law-to-be mm-hmm. is, is introduced, uh, he, he looks like a fucking douche. Mm-hmm. Like, he, so he's, like, a foot taller than Fatboy Mafioso, skinny, weird looking facial hair like he doesn't look like yakuza he looks like the italian mob you know Mm -hmm. what i mean yeah and i think that's what's really funny about how this is like developing Mm -hmm. yeah and developing so we we have these three standout homeless people sitting along the wall and they they're they're standing out because everyone's in a tuxedo they're in this bright (laughs) chandelier and they're like in three jackets each yeah 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 yeah. (laughs) just like clearly have it washed and that's and this is like the only scene where they don't make fun of their smell yeah, which yeah. I think is like really like Fatboy Mafioso was like, hey, these th- these three fuckers saved me from dying right now, so whatever they need, mm-hmm. like just leave them the fuck alone. Like he's the Godfather. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like they saved the Godfather from underneath this truck. And it's really crazy cause, <laughs> because by the time we meet his his uh, son-in-law, mm-hmm. we're like, okay, what is this dude gonna do? And out of no fucking nowhere, one of the servants starts pulling out a gun. What? And hold on. Isn't that? Oh, hold on, but like I'm describing how uh, oh, Gene got ahead. the bottle that you were talking about. Oh yeah. yeah. So like uh, waiters are walking by with like couple champagne bottles uh-huh. and champagne yeah, glasses yeah. to give away flutes, and Gene just when the lady walks by just grabs two, starts chugging one, and starts holding the other one aggressively like he's gonna club, like the one of the two mafioso guys. He's staring at both of them together. It looks mm-hmm. like it's gonna be the son-in-law, yeah. right? That he's got a bone to pick with. Yeah. And um. So then, uh, Fatboy Mafioso introduces R3 and the baby to uh, young son-in-law Mafioso. Mm -hmm. And they're like, okay, here's the problem. Do we know this girl? So they're showing them the photo of the couple that they found (laughs) in the locker. So um, he recognizes her right away. And like, like, this is the only character I might hate in this whole movie, the son-in-law. Because like right away he's like, oh, we know, th- I know that skinny broad. Mm-hmm. Her her husband owed us a bunch of money, and then we made her pay out more than once. If you know what I mean, just like super douchey and fucky, and like oh, yeah, you're right. and, and jeans in the background being like, he made her do that, like with the bottle, with the giant champagne bottle in his hand, mm-hmm. being like, he made her do that. Like he's like, is he talking about? the mom of the baby is he talking about his own daughter because we said that he clearly has some past with the mom mm-hmm. and like is afraid of the son-in-law and he has an estranged past with his daughter so it's like dude was Jean's daughter pimped out by the mom mm-hmm. but like right now what we're finding out is what we what we what we think right now is that the mother of Kyoko the baby they found in the dumpster is a girl that was turned out by the fucking mom mm-hmm so and then we're like, holy fuck, is she like a like a like a prostitute baby or something? Like, do we know who this dad is here? Like, what the fuck is going on? So then, uh, Kyoko needs a diaper change. Uh, Miyuru uh, goes to the restroom to change mm-hmm. her, and that Miyuki. It, Miyuki, whatever the fuck I said. I don't know. I'm just making shit up. Miyuri? <laughs> I'm just making shit up. Miyuki uh, is you. changing the baby, and that is when we get a uh, the, the the camera goes back to the to the ballroom. Correct. <laughs> and just this brown chick with like long black hair, which apparently was a dude with a wig and hoops on, yeah. just busts out this big ass fucking gun and like tries to shoot a fat boy mafioso twice in the chest, and the son-in-law like jumps in. He's like, "No, boss, I got you." It, so, like, on his wedding day, the son-in-law of Fatboy Mafioso got shot twice in the chest for some bullshit. Like, it was a hit on Fatboy Mafioso, and the son-in-law took it to the chest. So now all this crazy shit's happening. Um, 
uh, Miyuki gets held hostage. I, I almost said Miyuru again. Yeah. So Miyuki is like <laughs> walking out into the dining room while like fucking She's bedlam. Like, what the fuck's happening? Yeah, what's going on? What's going on? So, and then like the, with the baby, with the baby. So and this Mexican dude just like grabs her, like puts the gun to her back. He's like, like tranquila, run. niña, tranquila. I got, I got it. <laughs> it's like, come, no te voy a hacer daño, no te voy a hacer daño. And I don't know. <laughs> it's already been 30, 40 minutes into this movie and I'm like fucking Spanish let's do it and they keep talking Spanish like throughout like maybe five minutes almost, it, was, it was a good you know? it was a good about because like he takes her out and takes her into a cab and then takes her to like the slums and the whole time he's like trying to talk to her in Spanish and she's just like she's in the dub it's funny because it sounds like if I were to try to make fun of somebody she's just like me no hablo like uh-huh. where are you taking me oh or like you know what I mean just like just like Spanish fine like mm-hmm. English and it just comes out super tacky yeah so they go to the slums they find his house, I guess, mm-hmm. and he's like dragging her in with the baby, and you hear her start to yell. Like it, it's it clicks all of a sudden. Like it's mm-hmm. funny because there's a language barrier there, and then all of a sudden it like clicks in her head. Like, holy shit! Like, what if he's trying to sell me into sex slavery or something? So when he starts and dragging, she's yelling like, yeah, no, she, I don't want to be a sex slave. But like they live, this is such like a shitty neighborhood that nobody even like wants to go outside. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. If somebody's yeah. screaming, but. She didn't get sold into sex slavery. She doesn't get sold into sex slavery because you're like, what the fuck is going to happen? She finds this, ne- this nice Mexican couple and their baby. Yeah, and they have a baby, so the uh, the, the mom starts breastfeeding. Oh, because that's baby. what he was saying in the cab. He's yeah. like, he, he's like, like ella, tiene hambre. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. He, ella you know? quiere leche. Or uh-huh. like, just, like, just just saying stuff like that. And she's like, what, leche? Uh-huh. And, and so the the wife had recently had a baby so she she's breastfeeding mm-hmm. and she's able to give Kyoko like a Food. meal the yeah. meal that she needs yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. so that was really cool it, it, it goes from like <laughs> it goes from like holy shit this little girl's about to be sold into sex slavery to just being like nope baby's getting fed Back, back at the fucking uh, uh, at the at the shooting of of the, of the, of the <laughs> they just abandoned the scene of like yeah they abandoned the scene <laughs> but dude honestly because they they put it as the the gun shooter the the son in law and then game coming at like at at a like at a common point in in, in this attack where it's happening uh-huh. I thought Gin was gonna save end up saving the mafiosos again and something even better was gonna happen. That's where I thought that was going. And then people just get shot. It was I, crazy. I think that's also a really cool testament to, like, how the directing is. Like, all of a sudden, we have an A plot and a B plot. Because, like, two of our characters are with the Mexican or with the Mexican couple. Mm-hmm. The other two are still back with the mom. Mm-hmm. So, like, if, if anyone's suspect, it might be the two weird homeless people that just showed up to the wedding. Mm-hmm. So they drink, too. <laughs> they They're like, out. let's fucking go. I think they whole ass jump a fence and everything. Yeah, like, they do, dude. It's crazy. Because they're like, they already know because they're homeless. They're like, we got to get out of here. Yeah. We're the people that they're going to think shot this person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, dude. Good. Oh, the pacing's so good. It's so funny. And I was having so much fun at this point. I'm like, fuck it. Let's run it. Let's, it's so Let's funny. see what happens. Let's see what happens. So <laughs> so we got the baby being fed. Uh, um, Ms. What, what's her name? The baby? Kyoko. 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 So She's how, being fed. She's how, getting... Put down. There's still Spanish going on, and they're talking to Miyuki. They're like, "What's going on?" Child's like, "Relax." It's like we're not gonna do whatever, anything in Spanish, but she doesn't understand this, so she's just like, "I, I don't know." But and they're, they're starting to they're, have a conversation through this language barrier. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. They're looking at pictures. They're yeah, but like, I, I wanted to go into more of what the B plot is because we're yeah. about to get a C plot too. Correct. Is so uh, Hana like barely has enough money. She's 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 homeless, right? She doesn't really have any money. But then she sees a cab, like, and she, like, gets him, and she's like, follow wherever the fuck that girl was going. That's where I need to go. And, like, just kind of, like, takes this cab driver on a wild goose chase, swearing she's got the money. Mm -hmm. But then Gene, again, being, like, drunk and, like, scared and frustrated and didn't want to deal with the baby situation anyways, he's like, fuck you. I'm going to go do my own thing. Mm -hmm. And the thing about it is they took, like, a train for some odd distance away from their subsection in Tokyo. So they're, like, far, far from that. So this is, like, two nights later, too. So, uh, 
So Gene's like, fuck that. I'm going to go do my own thing. Like, I'm, I'm going to go get drunk in the street and just, like, go be mm-hmm. angry and homeless. And, and right before the Hana, it's almost like, yeah, that's all what you're good for. It's like, leave. And the conversations. It got and, really personal. And the motivation of this baby. Because at this point, you already know that the baby is the main, you know, the main source of the story. Like, the baby's not going anywhere. Because, mm-hmm. dude, I saw, at that point that I thought he was going to die, I don't know. I thought everything could happen. <laughs> you know? That's what I'm saying, yeah. But, uh, the, what was going to be my point? Uh, the baby, the baby's the main character. Uh, with the, the conversations that they're having of like, yeah, go do what you do best and then him doing it. Like, he go, goes out and gets drunk and he's saying, he's like, kind of like rhyming. He's like, oh, I'm going to go drink and I don't care where Hana and and Miyuki are blah 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 some shit like that and, and he finds like somebody almost dead in the street an old an old homeless person somebody even older and homelesser sir, sir. <laughs> more homelesser <laughs> uh, more homelesser it's just like literally like face in the snow like probably wet like just like resigned to dying you know what I mean mm-hmm. and Gene just pulls up with like that same champagne bottle that he took from the fucking shooting he's like hey old timer you can, can I give you anything in your last breath? And he's like, you can give me one thing. And he just wants to get drunk because, mm. you know, he's homeless. homeless. So, and then Gene Holas takes him back to his shed, which is, like, neat because, like, it's got a bunch of little windmills on him, like, the the cute little pinwheels, like, the ones on a stick. And, like, they're spinning, they're spinning, and, like, the two are bullshitting, they're getting drunk. And then the old man just kind of, like, mid-sentence, just kind of, like, just lays back and stops breathing but with his eyes open and she's like rest in peace old man mm-hmm. and then like he can't close his eyelids because he thinks he's dead and the old man's like still alive but at that same time the pinwheels are a metaphor for the old man's life because mm-hmm. when they show up they're spinning for like a second when Jin thinks the old man's dead uh, they stop spinning mm-hmm. but then when he opens his eyes and starts talking again like they start spinning again mm-hmm. and we're just like what the fuck this is playing with my feelings so then um uh, they they they. Hana Hana finds uh, Kyoko and Miyuki. Well, the C plot finishes be- mm-hmm. before that. Oh really? Yeah yeah yeah. It's not until the bad thing happens to Gene. Oh yeah yeah. So uh, they they drink some more. Old man finally dies. The pinwheel stop. Metaphor complete. Mm-hmm. And then like Gene's about to leave, and then like four guys just show up with like steel fucking bars and beams in their hand, <laughs> and they're just like. Hey, you homeless fuck. Like, we came to beat the shit out of somebody because we're bored. And I'm like, what the Yeah, fuck? orange clockwork kind of fucking yeah, style. Clockwork orange. Yeah, clockwork <laughs> orange. It's The clockwork orange starts with the gang beating up with a homeless guy. Yeah, yeah. And it's super ugly. Like, you don't think it's going to be graphic? Because, honestly, even the shooting wasn't that graphic. Yeah, They get graphic, get graphic with too. Gene getting the shit beat up. Because at first, Gene's wasted, right? Like, he's been drinking all day. All mm-hmm. fucking day. Since the morning when he found the bottle at the cemetery, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, um, he, like, they, they, it, it's such a joke because, like, the guys are clearly drunk too. And one of their boys is doing, like, air quotes kung fu and just, like, messing around and falling down on the ground. And you think, like, oh, okay, maybe Gene won't actually get hurt. Mm-hmm. And then they just jump him. Like, all of a sudden, they just jump him, and they kick him down to the ground, and, like, they start kicking his ribs, start kicking his face, they're taking the steel beam to his face, like, like a whole-ass pole yeah. from a pipe, and just beating him in the face with it, and then they go to that shed where that homeless man just died, they pull the body out, and they're like, hey, hey, and start, like, beating the corpse, being like, hey, hey look at this fucking weirdo, look at this fucking dead-ass weirdo, I'm like, like this. It's so I'm watching, I'm like, gross. what the fuck is going on? And then, the only reason they stop is because one of the guys gets a call, and it's some girls inviting them to the bar. Yeah. Hey, the girls are right, they're close by. I yeah. thought it was going to turn to a John Wick movie, dog. No, it, it's worse because it's real life. So yeah. Gene just kind of wanders away, like, with a fucking concussion mm-hmm. and, like, bleeding from everywhere. So, at that same time, Han is uh, in that cab, like, torturing that guy, runs up uh, the meter... Like, they figure out where the apartment, where the, the Spanish-speaking apartment was, mm-hmm. and uh, stop, and he's like, pay me, pay me, pay the fare. And she's like, no, uh, just, keep the, just keep, keep the car running, we'll be right back. Mm-hmm. And, like, they walk in, steal, well, how did they get out of there? They, had, they ran out, didn't they? Like, dramatically? Who, the girls? Yeah. 
I think they went back into the cab, didn't they? Yeah, they go back into the cab, but I can't remember. Because they heard a couple... No, they heard... Uh, I think like a, uh, an ambulance crew saying like, oh yeah, the homeless dude was beaten up pretty bad oh, or some shit like that. Oh, right. And then they go to the hospital. They ask the, the the taxi driver, which he's a prevalent character in the story. Yeah, you know? he, he keeps showing up just to be tortured like night after night. Yeah. So they go to the hospital. Gene's not there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Jen's not there. Yeah, be- oh, because they they're walking by and the the, the g- old man. Oh, 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 because when they're coming out of like that slummy apartment district, uh, there there's a stretcher mm-hmm. in an ambulance, being like, "Yep, he we found him dead and drunk in the snow," and it's just like the the super old guy that just died. But then Hannah's freaking out because she's like, holy shit, like, where the fuck is Gene? Like, I, I really let him go out on his own. He might be drunk and dead out there somewhere. Mm. So that's when they just, like, abandon... The, I don't think they get back in the cab right then. Because I think they're about to dip out, like, run through the streets and figure out where Gene is. But, um... No, 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 no. They stay with him and they make the cab driver, like, drive around, figure out, out where... Uh, where Gene is they find him in an alley he's passed out no 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 I'm getting it confused yeah because it's actually somebody that works at the club that that Hannah grew up in that finds Gene passed out in the snow and he thinks he's hallucinating so Hannah working at this club it's like a drag queen club you know what I'm saying and they sing and they dance or whatever and well Hannah Hannah had always a, a a a place to go back to and we're trying we're, tr- we're figuring this out as the movie go, like starts developing mm-hmm. but shit they go back to the club and they meet with like the, the girls there yeah. and they're like have you seen or heard of anything but that was their intention but once they get there Gin is there right yeah. so like they tell the cab driver oh I know where to go it's Hannah's place and like when the door opens like it's 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 a woman, but she looks like she's a drag queen, mm-hmm. just like this super old like crony looking bitch. But it's it's Hannah's mom. So as soon as she opens, she's like, "Mother, I miss you. We didn't know where else to go. I lost Jean." In like, they thought she was gone, gone. Like they didn't realize she was staying just like the other side of Tokyo, kind of shit, being mm-hmm. homeless. They thought she was doing her own thing, but not that she was homeless. Correct. But then on the couch, they see Jean, and he's all fucked up, and they bandaged him up. Mm-hmm. And it's, it, I get what you mean about like there being lulls. Cause like they're always headed to a destination, but then once they get to destination, it's like made so them, it's like made them it miss for a little bit. Like mm-hmm. they chill out, regroup, and then they're gone again the next day and then it ramps up. So they chill there for the night. Uh, they're telling a story about Hana basically chose to become homeless because mm-hmm. she embarrassed herself by throwing a drink at a guy that was making fun of her singing mm-hmm. while performing at the bar and then also subsequently like beat the shit out of him because like Han is a trans woman but like she's kind of big like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she kind of big so like she beat the shit out of some guy and was so embarrassed like was she like, decided I'm never performing again yeah yeah and became homeless yeah. about it I don't Crazy. know what dude it, and at that same time there's a scene we didn't even describe where um it it's a uh, Miyuki at the phone booth mm-hmm. like um I think it's uh the night after Christmas at some point where uh, um, where she's debating whether or not she should call her dad because she gets in a fight with Hana and Jean mm-hmm. oh that's when Jean gropes her it's the first night it's Christmas uh-huh. night when Jean gropes her and he's just like hi you're not a real woman you don't have anywhere to actually go or whatever uh-huh. she's like I do I choose to be homeless I choose to be homeless I choose to be out here I have a home to go back to so just to prove it being like you're such a fucking asshole I'll prove it to you and I'm gonna call my dad and then she picks up or she calls and when she calls and her dad picks up she's so scared she doesn't say anything and just the sound of like breathing and like silence over the phone the dad's like Miyuki is is that you is that you please come home baby please come home and it's sad and then we didn't didn't even mention the so then she had the metro What do you mean? On the on the train? Like when they get on the on the train? The... Well, hold on. Let me finish oh. that scene. Oh, okay. So then that's when Miyuki gets uh, the flashback of why she could never go home. Uh-huh. And basically she was kind of chubby in middle school. And like she had no friends. So she got a cat to feel better about herself and uh-huh. like to have somebody to hang out with. And the dad hated the cat and let the cat run away. And she also claims that the dad didn't give a shit about her because he was a cop and was too busy. 
and he knitted her a scarf and no she needed knitted him a scarf and he didn't give a shit so then like she stabs him in the living room one day starts screaming like you never fucking loved me where the fuck is my cat and his name is something stupid like fuzzball or something where the fuck is fuzzball mm. you let fuzzball get away <laughs> something fucking like with a, stupid fucking, with like a knife fuzzball. with a knife in her hand and like his blood and he's just like what the fuck like just like bleeding in the living room and he turns <laughs> and ah oh, man it's it's uh it's like fuck why because before that scene there's also a scene where because you don't know if she got stabbed but uh, when they're in the in the train Across it, they they had to stop because of snow build up, so they stopped next to another train. And across trains, um, and recognizes her, and he starts, yo yo. So we're led to believe it's like, oh shit, that's probably somebody that she the, from her family. Mm -hmm. And once we get to the stabbing part, you're like, what the fuck is happening? What the fuck is this? It's crazy because like I think that also highlights how like. It's nor it's people with like severe mental disorder that end up being homeless a lot of the time, like because at some point if you think like people are against you, against you, that's a form of fucking mental, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Because she's like, I can never go home or my dad will arrest me. Mm -hmm. And like Miyuki clearly has something going wrong because she stabbed her fucking dad. Correct. Gene needs fucking therapy because he's got like substance dependence issues. And then, like, we talked about how Hana's, like, a little bipolar or whatever because she, like, stole the baby and everything, mm -hmm. kind of. Like, this all kind of happened because she's a little manic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I mean, she does get a lot of shit throughout the entire movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you feel, like, worse for her. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And always just, like, being called slurs the whole time. Yeah, every every, every scene we're describing, but, like, peppered in slurs. Every slur. Dog, they <laughs> throw Fs in there? Every slur. Crazy. Like, fruitcake and, like, the mean F word and, like... Oh, just every word. Every word you can think of, at least in the dub. They threw every, no, like, slang no. the fuck in there. No, it's the same in the sub. It's the same in the sub because I... Off mic, I had said something very uh, 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 unsensitive, but I said it because on the sub, the 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 person that receives her at the club, the mm -hmm. old the old trans woman, mm -hmm. uh, the, it's like the bartender too, mm -hmm. she... They're talking about an old love of Hana or a client or something like that. And they're talking about how he passed away. And then she le she leans in and asks, AIDS? And that's what they put on the sub. I don't remember that. Yeah. I don't remember that, bro. Yeah. That's scary. And then there's nothing said. And then we start seeing that Hana has some, like, maybe blood deficiency issues. Oh, right. Because, like, she's always kind of really tired when they're running. And then there comes a, a point later on that, like, she starts, like, throwing up and stuff like that. And that's what I had said that throwing comment. Throwing up blood, yeah. And that's what I had said that comment because on the sub, that lady leans in and she's like, did he die of aid? Oh, no. Uh-huh. Oh, no, that's really sad. I didn't yeah. pick up on any of that. Oh, no. Yeah, dude, crazy. Oh, no, I'm so stupid. So uh, if we're really back from the whole AIDS thing, yeah, that that's 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 why I had said that comment, but, like... Wow, I'm so stupid. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so uh, they're... they're, they're blah, blah, blah. They spend the night at the at the drag club. Mm -hmm. They're going to huff it the next day. They know where they're going because um, the I think the they got the address from the son-in-law of... Uh, the Godfather. Mm -hmm. So they, they kind of have an idea what side of town they're going to and they're going to keep going. They take off the next morning. They show up to the house. It's abandoned. It's not even just abandoned. It's, it's like, like gone. Like, like yeah, yeah. Like destroyed. half of it's gone. Like the yeah. front half of the building is just like completely caved in. Uh, there's shit and, everywhere. And just pack rats too. Yeah. Like there's just garbage everywhere. Newspapers, like empty lottery tickets cat everywhere. Because there's a cat lady around. Oh, uh, yeah. And like that's where they spend the night too. Yeah. So like they don't even realize it's the house that they're supposed to be in at first. Uh -huh. Because they're like, we got to get to this street. We got to get to this street. Yeah, they're looking at a photo trying to figure out like the over the landscape the skyline yeah over the skyline thank you they're trying to figure out like the exact location that they were in and it starts raining that night or snowing really bad again mm -hmm. so they just spend the night in some random abandoned place and they put up a, the tent and they're camping and Jean's like this 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 uh this shelter would be really good without all the cats i wonder mm -hmm. what cat meat tastes like and there's just like 30 cats but like what we just talked about like Miyuki has stabbed somebody over a cat before. <laughs> like, yeah. she's very protective of these cats, yeah. and it's funny because they all start like hissing at, 
hissing at Gene. He's just like, I was just kidding. I was just kidding. So then they wake up the next morning and they're like, what street did we need to be on? Mm -hmm. Well, I think we're here. And they stayed the night in the house that they were looking for. Correct. And, and it's abandoned. Correct. And then there's a cat lady that explains to them. It's like, oh, they left. It's, it's, all that. it's funny because like all the middle-aged women that live in the neighborhood, like know all the gossip. Mm -hmm. Like the one lady's just walking by doing what old people do and just taking a walk. Yeah. Because she's got to get her steps in. Just hears people yelling in the house. Yeah, yeah. So she starts gossiping. Ooh, that couple. They were only here for six months, but like they were always arguing. They were always late for the rent. They were always late for the rent. Yeah. I heard she worked down at that club. Ooh, 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 ooh. And the, they were like, the, the guy was a gambler, blah, mm -hmm. blah. And she was working off all his debts. And then, so we start fucking like. It gets saucy for like a minute. Like, like buttons are being pressed because Jen is like, oh, the gambling. And then like. The, the girl is like, oh, she went to go work at that club. And then Sohana's there. And then, like, the whole fucking thing is just pressing buttons all over. And it gets pretty spicy because they're like... It's funny. Like, it, where the fuck are these parents? Are they better off with us than these people? Well, it's funny because, like, every lady they talk to is just like, oh, but I don't know the details of that. Let's go ask Miss So-and-so. Mm -hmm. They go ask Miss So-and-so. She tells more of the story. Oh, but Miss Other So-and-so. So they have the whole neighborhood around them by the end of it. It's like 20 mm -hmm. fucking middle-aged women. Just like all gossiping about this one fucking couple. Mm -hmm. And then they finally get like the owner of the homeowners, the president of the homeowners association that's like, oh, they moved to this other place. Mm -hmm. But you're right. So it's like gambling debts. She was working she at was the club pregnant. and getting pimped out. And that's when she got pregnant. So then it's like, oh, like I'm still about the like dog. She got pregnant, not by her husband and by working at the club kind of thing. And it, it's really ugly and fucky. And... They, they they try to go to where they think the new house is again. And the animation and the, the way it flows, it's not... It is fucked up. It's super fucked up at some points. But even, like, the pacing of this moment doesn't let you simmer on those fucked up fucking moments. Like, something fucked up happens and then, like... It just keeps changing all the time. Because when I was watching it, it felt to me that the shit that was fucked up was almost canceled out by like how, the the good of the movie. The, the tragedy. The, the, not not the tragedy, but like the the good deed of this homeless people like trying to return the baby. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh man, like that sucks that they have to go through all this, but they're still trying to. They're great people. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Like it, they're yeah. great people. It reminds me of what's that movie? Where they have like CGI pets trying to make their way back across the country. It's like two dogs and a cat. Oh, it's like diaries. It's, or... it's called it's called like Homeward Bound or something. Homeward Bound. Something yeah. like that. But that's what this reminds me of. Back home. But dog, I, I I'm reading uh, the synopsis right here. But Hannah's Hannah's old lover didn't die from AIDS though. No, that, I that, know. that was the joke. I I forgot about that. He died from slipping on a bar of soap. Yes. Oh yeah. That's <laughs> yeah, right. He, yeah, died, yeah. he died from slipping on a bar of soap. That's right. Because yeah. The, but the woman does ask is like AIDS. It's like no. He just slipped on the bar of soap. <laughs> yeah. So um, they after the incident at the abandoned house, they still have no idea where the new parents are, or they're gonna go. But they mm -hmm. they. They need to do bum stuff because they haven't eaten in a while and they still haven't had anything like water. So they're just like hanging out at a clerk shop, at, at like a 7-Eleven, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just like not buying anything, just loitering. And every time anybody walks in, they're like, oh, it smells like shit in here. Oh, it smells like shit in here. They, and um, he, Gene gets kind of drunk again. I, I, I can't remember where he found the drink, but I think he got, an, no, no, no. He got an argument with a drunk. So, uh, him and, uh, so it's Jean and Hannah sitting in the store and that's when, uh, Miyuki's making the, the phone call to her dad and not answering, mm -hmm. uh, a super, super wasted guy, like barely like able to hold himself up on the counter is like, Oh, it smells like shit in here. Is that you? Oh, and then you have that. F and then, and then you have that F word, like homo this, homo that with you. And that's when Jean gets pissed. He's like, I'm a P like, like you, you just made, you just talk like that in front of like somebody in front of me. So they, they're going in this whole out brawl. They take it outside. And that's when, um, uh, Miyuki like runs up. Like, What's Miyuki going on? Kyoko is running up. Yeah, yeah. And then Hana, like the fight stops because Hana just like vomits blood onto the ground. Mm -hmm. So that's scary. You know what I mean? That's really the ambulance. Scary. Yeah. 
Oh. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, 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 okay. So, so here's this scene, right? These, this, dr- like, this, fuck dr- you, fuck th- this you. drunk dude and this homeless dude are fighting, and then they're fighting. And Hannah's like, "No, everybody, stop! Everyone, stop!" Throws up blood on the ground. Everyone stops for a second. And the sound direction here is amazing because in the background you just hear like a random, ev- but it's getting louder. Like yeah. you're you're sitting in silence for a second. You're just like, is that actually getting louder? And then the fucking ambulance hits the Seven Eleven and like runs through it and destroys everything. Like you like talk about like it, it plays with your emotions because it's like okay cool like they were about Fight. to die. The, the 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 tone like drops a bunch and then all of a sudden it's just like bam we're at a hundred mm-hmm. again and, and like the ambulance driver just like falls out and he's like and, like call an ambulance call an ambulance <laughs> and and the genre is listed as tragic comedy some shit like that like a tragic comedy which it is At some point it is because mm-hmm. uh, but then after the ambulance that's when she's like that's when she throws up the oh blood. that's when she throws up the yeah. blood yeah and and then she and then they take her to the hospital and they're telling her that she has some deficiency and stuff like that. Yeah. And this ram because the mention just the mention of AIDS in the sub, I was like, okay, whatever. And I'm like, is this some like, uh, what is it, Dallas Buyers Club kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. You know, and it it just I don't know. I was like, what the fuck is this gonna turn into now? Like, yeah. where's the baby gonna be? Is she dying before the baby gets turned in? Like, what the fuck's happening? So, uh, it kind of just cuts to mm-hmm. immediately after the doctor visit. Like, mm-hmm. it's Jean sitting down with the doctor. And uh, the doctor's explaining, like you would to a loved one, like, they're, they're treating them like a couple. Mm-hmm. And being like, hey, she's deficient. She She's not eating properly. She's not she getting enough rest. water. She needs rest. And he's like, well, doc, we're fucking homeless. Like, what do you want me to do? How am I going to get a good meal out mm-hmm. there like that? And he's like, honestly... Like, get out of here. I'm here to treat the symptoms, and I can't treat what's going on with you out there. Mm. And it's like, holy fuck, that's really mean. And, like, Gene looks like he's going to pop off, and the doctor stands up, and he's on, like, metal legs. Mm. Like, he's lost his legs before or something like that. So that's sad. And then, again, back to the tragic part. So now uh, they they go to the counter, and they're like, uh, uh, they, they charge Gene for the for the medical bill. But then, but then in the room where Hana is... Miyoko meets Kyoko, the nurse. Right. Right? Yeah. Daughter of Gin. Right. So now, when while while Gin was talking to the doctor, he comes out and goes back to the room, and then he meets his daughter. No, no, no. It doesn't happen there. It's it when doesn't happen It's there? when he's paying the bill. Oh, it's when he's paying the bill? It's when he's paying the bill. So, like, oh, you're uh, right, you're Hana right. and Jean are there. Gene had a envelope full of money that he was going to give as a gift to his daughter once he found her again. Mm-hmm. And so they go up to the counter and she's like, it'll be 20000 something again, which is like $200. And that's when Hani just like starts crying. She's like, I'm so fucking sorry again. I'm so, this is all their money. You know what I mean? It, it, it's like exact change except for like two yen or some shit. Mm-hmm. And then like, they're just like sad after paying the bill, they get their change back and then Jean looks up, and then the other Kyoko looks up, like, who's working in the hospital, and, he's, and they're just like, she's just like, Dad? And then we're like, what the fuck? Like, this guy's been saying the daughter was dead, that she was pimped out, and now she's just, like, just works in the clinic. Uh-huh. So they're hanging out, like, in an isolated part of the hallway. They're getting some privacy, and Hana's, like, eavesdropping in the whole time. Like, they're not too far off while... Um, Jean and his daughter are talking Mm -hmm. and it's just the daughter talking being like after uh, all your gambling debts like you started freaking out and you just kind of left me and mom but we stayed looking for you we we knew you were going to be all right and like she was talking like like she's ready to start a relationship with him again Mm -hmm. and he's just like like dog like I I abandoned you for Mm -hmm. my for (laughs) not my for for my for my bike debt so Mm -hmm. he wasn't a famous cyclist he would bet on cycling races Mm -hmm. and that's how he became in debt with the mob Mm -hmm. so it it's really fucking gross and you just hear hana in the back being like you're full of shit like you've just been lying this whole time and getting all these fucking sympathy points Mm -hmm. uh the daughter like gives him gives gene his phone numbers like i hope to hear from you again but like it seems like there's gonna be a falling out between Hana and Jean over this because like he's just been lying this whole time. Mm-hmm. And it's super fucking ugly and gross because see well in the in the sub while that's happening 
um, Hana and uh, Miyuki are sitting on a bench outside the room that they were just in or something like that, right? Mm-hmm. And Hana and and Miyuki are li- are they over here in the conversation. It's like, wow, that's his daughter, blah, blah, And you start seeing Hana. She's like, oh, the lying bastard, blah, blah, blah. Oh, and she's just holding it in. And she blows. She's like, oh, shut up, you hobo. Uh, you lied about your daughter and your wife being dead, and blah, blah, blah. And yeah, they have a follow. That she leaves, and, and they, yeah, they... Miyuki goes with her. They've got the baby, because and... it's almost seemed like an abandonment of his hobo family. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So Miyuki uh, is talking to Hana and is like, "Why'd you do that? Is he gonna be all right?" And she's like, she, "He won't give a shit. He just needs to know that he's a piece of shit." Mm-hmm. And like they're they're walking. They're still gonna try to find the new address where the baby is. But they can't because Gene's the only one that has the address and it's in his uh, his coat jacket pocket. Mm-hmm. They just know the name of the family, I think, of the or, or the girl. Mm-hmm. They uh-huh. just know the name. And again, and, have a picture. and again, Gene's back in that attitude where he's like, "Well, fuck you. I'm just gonna go get drunk in the street." And I didn't give a shit about that baby. Anyways, this is like the third, fourth time this has happened. But mm-hmm. like, it's in character because yeah. he's just some drunk hobo, right? Correct. Correct. So uh, he he's just kind of wandering off. And um, I can't remember how it happened, but he decided to go. Um, oh, no, no, no. The next scene is uh, Miyuki and Hana are crossing a, uh, a bridge with the with the baby uh, with the baby in their hands. Mm-hmm. And they see this woman about to jump off a bridge. They didn't see this woman. Oh, they didn't see her. Yeah. Yeah. Because the animation is so crazy. Because they're having a conversation, they're, they're there's a scene, dialogue. And there's just like this little yeah. lady in the back. So the scene the scene is them walking like this. And as they're walking and having a dialogue, dialogue there is like, okay, we have we have her name, we have the pictures, like let's ask for her in a specific around this, this area. As that's happening in the background, first time watcher, you're like, hey, there's a lady climbing up the, 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 the head, railing, the, yeah. yeah, the <laughs> edge of that bridge. And then it just you see her off. take you see her take her shoes off you see her start climbing up in a pencil skirt correct and then the the animation keeps going and she passes frame and I'm like okay <laughs> <laughs> they just showed Whatever. somebody commit suicide it, it's it's Christmas it's sad maybe it's like two three days after Christmas maybe there's person but they do a cartoony thing where they're like wait wait wait, wait what was that and they <laughs> and fucking they, go back they're like no no what are you doing and they catch her and they bring her and she and this lady starts crying being like I lost my baby I lost my baby I'm never gonna get my fucking baby back uh-huh. because like also the falling out is in the hospital they saw on TV that there was a fucking APB put out on the baby you know what I mean mm-hmm. the baby was stolen from oh no 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 that's not until later no, that happens already. Oh, does it happen yeah, yeah. already? Where the the yeah. baby was stolen from a hospital. Uh huh. So they th- so this this lady that almost jumped off the bridge. That is guy crying. is the one that saw it, not them. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Jean yeah. saw it. Not yeah. not not uh, Miyuki Correct. and Hana. So this lady's crying. She's like, "My baby, my baby. I lost my fucking baby. She was mm-hmm. stolen." And they're just like, "Holy shit! You're Kyoko's mom. Are you blah 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 blah?" She's like, "Yes, I'm blah 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 blah." We mm-hmm. have her. We have the baby. So, like, they give the baby away. That's what makes Jin go to the address. Well, yeah, yeah. So, Jean, while walking by a TV, hears a news report. And hears on said news report that... Uh, a baby's the, been stolen. A baby was stolen on Christmas Day. And that you need to look look out for, like, this caricature. And they show the baby Kyoko. And he's just like, holy fuck, like, we're homeless. They're going to think that we stole this fucking baby. I need to go protect Hana and Miyuki because, like, they're going to get arrested. Because, again, as a homeless person, just like back in the wedding, you need to be worried about everyone just pinning shit on you. Mm -hmm. So he runs off down the city trying to figure it out. He thinks that they're going to the address. So he shows up at the apartment first, but they didn't. They never had the address and Correct. ran into the lady beforehand. Correct. So they never went to the to the apartment. All right, and then back to Hana and Miyoko, mm-hmm. the lady's crying over the baby. It's like, oh my god, it's my baby. But as an audience, you're already watching this, and you're like, oh shit, because Jim, that might not be the baby. <laughs> that might not be the baby. Or that's not the mom. Or that's not the mom. Yeah, and they give him away, and it's a very like powerful scene yeah. for this mother. 
She's like, thank you, thank you very much. Like she bows. Yeah, the and, whole and, thing. And, and, and like the their their farewell is nice. Hannah's like she likes milk and, and and she likes she doesn't like to be cold and like things that a homeless baby's gonna go through. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Because oh. it just it just like points out like oh she likes milk and she likes to eat and she doesn't like to be cold yeah. and things that is like yeah no baby does yeah, yeah kind of yeah. thing you know yeah. oh dude and it's and at this point. I haven't. I'm not looking at the timestamps anymore because I'm so into the movie, and I'm like, "What the fuck is gonna happen next?" I mean, they already gave the farewell. They obviously have to find Jin, and at this time, Jin finds the fucking the the the, the male figure in these pictures. He's like, he's fucking angry. He's so like, "You fucking bastards! Like, how could you do this?" Blah blah blah. Because at, at first, at first they. He is in the apartment somehow, and like that guy didn't know. Well, he just kind of breaks in. Yeah, he just kind of like picks in. the lock because yeah. like this place is clearly a mess. Like there's all this mail yeah. like popping out of the little mail hole. Yeah, like uh, and, and like Jean like probably thinks it's abandoned, mm. and that's why he goes. Was that True there? Life show the the hoarders? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. something like that. So yeah. like he goes in, and like as soon as he walks into the kitchen, there's just all these trash bags everywhere, mm -hmm. dishes everywhere. Like, just disgusting, right? Papers, receipts. Yeah, and when he walks in, it has that Japanese-style table bed thing that mm -hmm. we see in, like, uh... Kind of well, it's, it's like, the table, but, like, uh... It, it's also, oh, yeah, yeah. like, warm. Yeah. And then if you're staying on, like, a, another, like, bedding on top of it, like, you could just sleep under the table. Mm -hmm. Uh, so Gene's, like, walking around being like, what the fuck is going on? The TV's still on. Mm -hmm. And Gene's freaking out. And then he, like, kicks in the head. The husband... Of the lady that was on the bridge, the the, oh, the, the picture, gambling guy, the, the, the gambling guy that mm -hmm. the 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 gambling addict that we've been talking about this whole time, uh -huh. and he's just like, "Who are you? Why, why are you breaking in my house?" He's like, "I'm not breaking into your house. I I just like, thought we have your baby. I thought there were we have your baby. Okay, then where's the baby? No, <laughs> no, but the the the, the, the dog is not even like that. The, the, the guy's like, "Oh, that baby. I don't care about that baby." And then Jin is like, "Oh, you fucking asshole!" And beats the shit, the shit inside of, of his own apartment. Just beats the shit out of a stranger inside he's of his like, apartment because of you. It's like I know people like you. Him, him talking about himself. Yeah, you're just worthless, like, and you're getting realized what you did wrong in a few years. You're, you're just abandoning. Sitting. It's like I don't care about that crazy bitch. So that dialogue is very strong. He's like, I don't give a, sh I don't give a shit about that crazy bitch and her baby. It's like, and then he starts beating him up more. But then the dialogue, the, the 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 gambling addict in this in this apartment, he is talking, and then he's like, What do you mean? It's like. I don't know anything about that baby's like, but then Jin's like, he starts listening. Jin starts listening. like, yeah, like she stole that baby. I don't want anything to do with it. She's crazy. I'm gambling. Look at my winning ticket. He, and it was for like a hundred thousand yen, which yeah. is a thousand bucks. He's like, look, my luck's turned around. I got mm -hmm. this hundred thousand yen ticket. It's Correct. only a thousand bucks. And he's like, like, I don't know, millions of yen in debt. So Jin now knows. That this baby's stolen, and yeah. this is not the this is not the loving parents. And it's and it's not only that he gets the full 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 story. So like she was pregnant, uh -huh, and yeah. she got pregnant from somebody at the club. Correct. Because like apparently it's something wrong with him because they'd been trying and they'd never been able to. Uh -huh. So then like when it, it, she also miscarried. So the night she was at the hospital having lost the, her baby. having the miscarriage, yeah. lost the baby, estranged her husband because he realized that the baby wasn't his. And, like, all she wanted was to let the baby happen because, like, she had the choice to to excise it. She chose to have the baby because she just wanted to have somebody to love. The night she's recovering, she walks by the maternity ward, sees the babies. That baby Kyoko, like, smiled at her through the window because it's a fucking baby. So she just whole ass snatches it, runs out. Before she gets caught, feels guilty and throws it in that dumpster that mm -hmm. Kyoko was found in. Yeah. That's the whole story of what's going on right now. And it's, it's fucking insane. That's dude. crazy. You know so, that happens a lot in Mexico, dog? I like that's stolen babies. I, I've worked in hospital I've worked in hospitals before and I always well, at first I wondered why is the security so crazy? Uh -huh. Like it, in like uh it, in like the newborn section and that was why. Like once that was explained to me, I was like People really out here stealing babies? Dude. Dog, people really out here Dude. stealing babies. And then the fact that you just watch Hannah and Miyuki give Kyoko... Give, a, give the crazy lady the baby. They gave the crazy lady the baby, right? And then Jin just fucking... He's like, holy shit. And he just fucking books it. He grabs a bike. This guy's a fucking 
cyclist. Athlete, yeah, he's yeah. an athlete, dog. Because this dude's like fucking catching up to trucks and shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, bro. But before that, they he meets up with Hana Miyoko. He's like, no, where's that lady? He's like, he, we just give her back. You missed it. You missed the moment. Right. So it's New Year's Eve right now. Correct. So uh, uh, after giving the baby away, Hana and Miyoko are standing in line for the shrine so yeah. that you can get your, your luck for the year so that you can give pay, give your blessing or whatever. We see this in like a bunch of anime. I, mm-hmm. I, I remember it being in a, the Melancholy of Haruki, Suzumi and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So anyways, they do all that. They're like, ha, we gave we found the baby her home. This is so great. This is going to be a great year full of great luck. They see Jean running around and he's like, oh my God, oh my fucking God, oh my God, oh my God. Because he every time he hears a baby cry mm-hmm. in the area, he assumes it's Kyoko. Correct. And he's just running around, losing his mind, trying to, like, chasing everybody with a baby down, trying to figure out which one's Kyoko. And that's when Han and Miyuki see them. And he's just like, there you are. Where's the fucking baby? Where's the baby? And they're like, oh, we gave her away to her rightful mother. That lady stole her from a fucking hospital. We have to find her now. And correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't the animation of, like, him... Like, getting close to them. He's like, where's the baby? It's like, oh, we gave her back to the mom. And he doesn't even stop. He just keeps going. He's like, we need to find the fucking baby. They're like, that was not the mom. So, like, him cycling down, he does see her. Yeah. He does find her at a certain point. So, and, and right then, like, crossing the shrine is the cab driver from two nights before. And again, the magic's not even done because this is still a Christmas movie because all the babies start crying like a fucking call to the main baby. Yeah, yeah. Almost, because... The babies are just starts crying. They're like, "Holy fuck! There's there's trouble. There's trouble going on. And we need to find so, it." I so, don't know. So, it so, just... then, so then, like Gene driving by, well, riding down with a bike super fast. Crazy. It's chasing down every baby, and that makes Kyoko cry. He sees Kyoko with this weird fucking lady that he recognizes trying from the photo. Trying to breastfeed. Trying to breastfeed. Her. Trying and, to in like in an the alley dialogue. or some shit. No, there she's at a playground. She's oh, like, oh, she's yeah, at a, yeah, on the yeah. Tita Totter or yeah, whatever yeah. it's called. And she's like trying to feed her she's like, you won't get close to me unless you hatch, baby. Like she's fucking talking crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And on and, a seesaw. She's on a seesaw. On the seesaw, yeah, yeah, yeah. And our 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 three our three main characters are looking around and they finally see her and they're trying to run and the the crazy lady is like she jets and ah oh, dude, it's crazy. She like, she she runs and like a like a delivery truck driver like delivering drinks to like a convenience store. It's in the morning, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's early in the morning. She just like jumps in his truck, just takes off. Jean in the bike is trying to keep up with that truck, and that's when uh, Miyuko and, and Hana are like are in the, the, ca- the, the cab, like cab chasing behind back. it too. So they're going down a tunnel. Taxi like driver. Jean's almost catching up. And, like, you think he's almost squished in a tunnel at one point because, like, he's trying to open the, the driver's side door and gets, like, squished. Mm-hmm. And then he tries to open the passenger side door and he's, like, trying to wrestle with her while she's driving. And at that same, same time, like, the cab's still behind them and, like, they're trying to keep up. But then, while, while wrestling with Gene and, like, wrestling with the baby fussing... The the crazy lady not realizing while driving like drives straight into like a bank or something like a big business building, mm-hmm. and Jean has like the wherewithal like while the truck is flipping while being jammed inside of a building, grabs the baby and like kind of like tucks it in with his back and so like and he has a lot of jackets because he's homeless and he's fat <laughs> yeah he's <laughs> and, and he's fat so like yeah. his back is like hitting the wall but like the scariest part is like he's holding the baby and he sees that like a railing to a stairwell is a is ahead of him and he's facing it so like his front is about to hit it he kind of like reaches his arm out so it doesn't hit the baby and he takes that pole at like 40 miles an hour straight in the gut He's like, boom. And like, like, I'm like, s- holy shit, Jin's dead. Jin's dead. Like, like right then, I'm just like, oh my God. Like, for real, somebody died this time, and it's fucking Jin. I always knew the homeless guy, I, the homeless drunk man was going to die. It was going to be yeah. him. So, like, the baby's crying. They're freaking out. They they, they, they drive in. Um, the, the crazy lady, still alive somehow, and can, like, sort of kind of walk, like, grabs the baby, like, off the ground, off of Jin's, Jin's fucking corpse. And like takes it up an elevator. She's gonna go up to the fucking roof with the baby. So and, and then like the, and then Han and Miyoko are going up the stairs and shit. Well, hold on. The a really cool part is the cab driver drives through Ooh. the bank yeah. for whatever fucking reason. Crashes his car inside of the bank in front of the elevator. They and, and they just like ditch him. They were like, okay, we're going up. Bye. And, and like so they go all the way up. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, Miyuki at first that like chases her up there. Uh, Hana's trying to take care of Jin and like carry him up there. 
Mm-hmm. So, the crazy lady's at the at, at, at the top of the building with all the snow. And, like, she's, and she's still talking to herself, super crazy, to the baby. And, like, oh, mm-hmm. yes, little baby, we're about to be together happily forever immediately after this. Because you're not happy with me now, but in the next place, you'll love me and we'll be happy together. And I was like, she's really going to jump off the building. She's really going to jump off the building. So Miyuki jumps up to the roof. It's just like, hey, you crazy fucking lady. And, and now, like, there's camera crews because, you know, somebody just drove into a fucking bank. Yeah. And now there's, like, people on top. So, like, there's, like... The 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 news helicopter so is like, like a Batman scene. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. news helicopter is like recording these people on the roof. Mm-hmm. The cops are all on the bottom. They don't even realize that it's like an attempted suicide yet. The mm-hmm. cops on the bottom, they're just trying to figure out what's going on. Who drove into the bank? Yeah, who yeah. drove into the bank? <laughs> it's <laughs> it's like Christmas Eve, everybody. Yeah. Or it it's probably oh, yeah. like New Year's Day yeah, at New that Year's point. Day it's like New Year's Day at that point. Yeah. Like so it's like four or five in the morning, something like that. So then uh it's not until uh, the crazy lady is standing at the edge with the baby in her arms that everyone's like, holy shit, she's going to jump. She's going to jump. And it's just Miyuki just yelling in the background, being like, please, please don't do it. I, like, you, you're going to regret this so much, trying to talk her down. And um, at that same, same moment, the, her husband, the crazy lady's husband, the gambling addict, shows up on like an opposite ledge and is like hey baby i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm such a gambling piece of shit like please don't kill yourself in that baby we can start over we're gonna get through this together baby i love you so fucking much we're gonna get through this and you think she's gonna talk down you think she's gonna talk down and then at the last second she's like i love you i love you so much and she's looking at the husband and then just kind of jump and then like miyuki grabs her and is holding her by the coat and it's at that exact moment that from being saved, the crazy lady's like, holy shit, I can't kill this baby. I can't do this. Uh-huh. And then uh, she's like, let go, let go. So she's being, again, really manic, and she's going to fall. And then, but, like, Miyuki's little. Like, she's, like, a middle schooler. Yeah. So, like, she's falling off the edge. So then Jean grabs her, but, like, that jolt of, like, Jean having to grab um, the two other girls. Was enough to m- break. What, what may- makes the crazy lady, like, drop the baby. Mm-hmm. Hana jumps off the roof, like kind of runs down vertically down the building, grabs baby Kyoko, floats down on a banner hanging off of the building. The the top of the it holds on to the top of the banner. So one arm baby, one arm holding on to the top of this banner. The banner starts to fall. And again, big lucky, lady. Lucky bi- big lady. Big lady. She big in. Mm. Uh number one, number two. Kyoko's a lucky baby, which we hadn't seen in like a little while. It seems yeah. like Kyoko's been having some bad luck. She just, still there. She, she's, yeah. So at that exact moment that the banner's gonna fall, the the breeze of New Year's Day lifts up the banner that's holding Hana and Kyoko, and they slowly gives float a little down. resistance. Yeah, just just enough resistance just for them to safely, safely float down. And I'm just like, this movie's fucking gorgeous. I love this fucking shit so much. Because, like, it shows the breeze. Like, the the, the the sun peaks the horizon at the exact moment that the breeze catches the banner. Mm-hmm. And it's it's dope. It's so gorgeous. You know what I mean? And then, like, cutscene, it's it's them three. Well, no, it's the parents of the baby being like, oh, my fucking God. They're saving the baby. They, they, talking they, to a cop. Yeah, they're talking to both of the cops. They're like, oh, my God, thank you so much. And, like, dog, we didn't do anything. Mm-hmm. Actually, these three other people down the hall, like, rescued your baby. Yeah, like, there's four, three stinky like, people in the next Well, they room. don't see that at first. <laughs> no, so I know, I know. The, like, four, day, four days ago, your baby that was going to die in the snow, yeah, you got to go thank these people. So then we cut to, like, our main three, and they're just hanging out. And uh, it's funny, because Gene's asking for a cigarette in a hospital, which is fucking terrible. Honestly, mm-hmm. can I tell a story about that? Yeah. I was a health unit coordinator at the University Medical Center in Lubbock when I was an undergrad at Texas Tech. Mm-hmm. And... Um, the funniest night I ever had in a hospital was that like four in the morning, O2 sensors started going off. Like, a, like because they go off near like heat and flame because it's fucking oxygen and All it's right. going to combust. Right. And it was some fucking old fucker dying from lung cancer with all these O2 tanks on him, lit up a cigarette in his hotel room. He almost lit himself on fire, is already dying from lung cancer. It, and he's just like mad that people are trying to take his cigarette away. And it's and it's even worse because like the the young ass doctor is just kind of like oh just prescribe him a nicotine patch and like put him to bed like I'm tired mm-hmm. of dealing with him, 
Like it was, it's it's evil. Anyways, crazy stuff. So dude. Gene's smoking in the hospital. They're talking. I think he has a drink too, like a flask. Or Does some he? Shit. I don't yeah. even know this. Hannah's pissed because they put her in the men's ward, mm-hmm. and uh, it, like it's, I'm a lady, and, I, and she takes so much shit. She does take a lot of shit, then. but she she can dish it though. Like she yeah. she can beat the shit out of somebody. You, yeah. you you make fun of her. So um, at that moment, the cop comes in, or no, the cop's talking with the couple outside the door, mm-hmm. and they're like, "Oh, we want to thank them so much," and like ask them to be the be the baby's godfathers, Tokyo godfathers, mm-hmm. and. Um, the the cops just like okay okay whatever but just FYI they're homeless and they're like dog I don't give a shit mm-hmm. they they saved my baby like I, I I do not care if they're homeless right now mm-hmm. and like they walk through and the minute the cop walks through the door Miyuki looks at the cop and he's just like dad mm-hmm. and end of movie so like basically what we the the story is cool because like everyone got home it's about beginnings yeah, it's about all, new beginnings all four people got home. Baby Kyoko got back to her mom and dad. Um, Gene made up with his daughter. Yes. Hana made up with her mom at the drag club. And uh, Miyuki got back with her dad. Mm-hmm. And it's this beautiful little five day between Christmas and New Year's Day kind of story. And I think it's really beautiful. And a Christmas movie, bro. They left. They 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 left religion at the door, bro. It, at that door they left it. It, it it's kind of, it I think religion's brought up in the beginning cuz like they are attending like a catholic ceremony. Yeah. But it's treated so it Christmas. It, it's treated solely as like not not beating you over the head with religion or religious mm-hmm. spirit or anything, but it's kind not of like preaching. on on Christmas you be a good person, right? Correct. Like that's why you give gifts, like mm-hmm. that's why you hang out with your family cuz you're a good person. Correct. And like I think Tokyo Godfathers is just like you, you might be down on your luck, but just go into everything with the best intentions. And, and I think that's so beautiful. I think that's so dope. It's fucking beautiful, dog. And I will be watching this again in December because it is now one of my favorite Christmas movies. Might might be best Christmas anime thing I've ever seen. Probably. I, that's the only Christmas thing I've ever seen. Except for like an episode here and there. Yeah. 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 But, but yeah, I love it so much. Love it, it so much. It's really good. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's intense 90 minutes, bro. Like, fuck. It's because like Paprika, also by Satoshi Kon, is so fucking miserable to watch but like you watch it because like it's a feat that it happened you know what I mean like this exists Mm -hmm. and like you you want to like when we recorded you watched it three times I only watched it twice I felt guilty only watching it twice I was Mm -hmm. like I feel like I it's not even enough like Mm -hmm. I need to watch it like at least one more time to fully understand it because it's that complicated of a movie Mm -hmm. Tokyo God but it it felt like a chore you know Mm -hmm. what I mean not only did I not have time it felt like a chore Tokyo Godfathers is just a blast it's, mm-hmm. it's it's such like just feel good like endorphins just going through you that you want to watch it again like yeah. you actively look forward immediately after it's over yeah. you're just like I could totally watch that again, again. <laughs> yeah, I could totally watch that again like what time is it yeah definitely yeah, exactly oh uh, man but I haven't had this much fun in forever and 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 sh- uh, Shitoki what is Satoshi it? Kon Shitoshi Kon it uh, I don't know man Studio his, Madhouse production his 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 movies are something else. Love them. Or something else. Love them. Uh, One of the pillars of the anime film industry. Absolutely, because I'm talking, I'm talking like he's kind of like, bro, uh, like uh, what's what's the guy from? Uh, he's like Ghibli, bro. Orange Clockwork. Oh, Clockwork Orange is that? Um, Clockwork Orange. Uh, Kubrick. Yeah, Stanley Kubrick. Yeah, you know he's like Cu- Stanley Kubricky. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's Ve- wild. Just very good at filmmaking. Just like just just has like very good technical directing skills it's, mm-hmm. it's weird how good it is <laughs> it is absolutely intense the the pacing is amazing we're, the we're, animation is crazy did you, did you have any last points on Tokyo Godfathers on Tokyo Godfathers uh, I feel like I did there was this there was this one moment where Gin sees an angel because when he's drunk he's yeah, like oh, I wish I could see my daughter again and then the angel shows up so he's like well, was he about to die because uh, he was it, like, it was one of the girls in drag though yeah it was. yeah yeah oh, so okay. like it's after he gets the shit beat out of him by the kids he's dying in the fucking alley he's in the snow he's cold he's bleeding and right. then he and then the angel appears in front of him and the angel's just like would you like to live with me forever or would you want to me to bless your daughter that you miss and he's like no just I don't want to go home with you like just just put me down but and she's like that's rude and, and it turns out that it was one of the girls that worked at the club but it seemed that through his vision it was almost like he was out the door yeah, yeah you know yeah. what I'm saying but but like she was in yeah. like angel cosplay correct correct 
Which I thought was hilarious. Yeah, it was hilarious. Uh, even even though he movie. just got the shit beat out of him. Funny movie, but it's a tragedy. It's yeah. it's. Yeah. I'm gl- honestly, I am so glad it's not a true tragedy. If this thing had a bad ending, I don't <laughs> I know how I could live. I don't know how I could live with myself. Bro, I really don't. At some point, I'm like, I got flashbacks from like Grave of the Fireflies. I'm like, am I gonna fucking feel terrible like the entirety of my week? And it was. But good. like, it, it makes you feel Jeez, so good because because they earn the good ending. It doesn't they feel do. like given to. Like they really busted their asses for like five days yeah, to do the things. right thing and get this baby. Even though it would have been way more simple if they had just gone to the cops immediately. Whole whole sit, whole movie avoided. It's like that whole. Uh, why didn't they just take the the eagles to mortar the whole time? Mm-hmm. It, it's, it's like that kind of. But whatever. Then we wouldn't get the movie and the books and whatever. Uh-huh. But uh, um, one other last thing, we're not doing real nerd down today, but I did want to describe how the month of May is going to go for us. Uh, so you're already listening to this on probably May 2nd, May 3rd. Uh, this next week, we are going to be watching or finishing watching season one of Hunter Hunter. Season one? Uh, season three of Hunter Hunter. Season Excuse three. me. Uh, VNA Sosa, uh, all those. Back. All, all, all those uh, 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 baby mama. <laughs> I was like, is that a sensitive? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I don't think so. Uh, the the uh, all those lover Ain't nothing it, wrong with it, is, is gonna is gonna be um, uh, here to talk about season three of Hunter Hunter with us. Yes, we had an excellent conversation with VNA almost a year ago about season two, and season two was only like ten episodes or something. And this is what we were talking about off mic. It's like we pick. Three things, four things that we want to watch, and it's already a month. Yep, 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 yep. And to that point, I only have two other things to talk about. Yep. So that's the episode coming out the 9th. The 16th uh, is going to be our episode on Bubble, which will already be out by the time you hear this. It's a Netflix original. Uh, a lot of big by, names. Produced by Wit Studio. It's got mm-hmm. ginormous names attached to it. I don't know mm-hmm. what the fuck is going on. Mm-hmm. It seems like one of those Hollywoods fucking blockbusters and Netflix has a couple movies like that lined mm-hmm. up I don't know what's going on with Netflix so uh, we're going to be watching that and then and then here, here's the here's the sauce the the last two weeks of uh, May so the episodes coming out uh, the 24th and the 31st the 24th is going to be on episodes 1 through 24 of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Stardust Crusaders mm-hmm the episode that comes out the 31st will be on episodes 25 through 48 of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Stardust Crusaders. Mm-hmm. So we're going to have two weeks, two separate episodes, talking about the entirety of Stardust Crusaders at the end of this month. Mm-hmm. So look forward to that. I know we're looking forward to that. Super looking forward to Hunter Hunter. Absolutely. And, I mean, wherever that year takes us, we're, we're, we don't have anything planned as far as theme or anything, so we're watching whatever we, you guys tell us. And, and, uh, and, and same thing for, for we're, we're taking recommendations on mm-hmm. Instagram, Twitter. We're putting the polls up again. Mm-hmm. Um, if, if you, um, again, if you have any feedback you want to give back to us, like hit us up on social media at Between Nerds. On our episode of uh, Megalobox, episode 92, it's already up on YouTube, so make sure you like it. Subscribe it. Mm-hmm. You know? So so yeah, and, and also for the month of if you want to if you want to enter our giveaway for the month of May, make sure that you are a YouTube subscriber and you leave a comment on a YouTube video that month, or you leave a five star written review on Apple Podcasts, and we will get you some hand picked anime shit, like uh, not just figures. We're talking novelties mm-hmm. of whatever your favorite anime is. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one, one of my favorites was the candy from Grave of the Fireflies, precisely. Mm-hmm. Uh, cool. Uh, Tokyo Godfathers, fucking watch it whenever you want to. Amazing. For right now, and you can probably watch it again in December, which is what I'm going to do. Uh, it, it, I, it's, it's like... I can't even... It's I, like Die Hard being a Christmas movie. And like I love Die Hard, you know what I mean. I love Die Hard. You know I what I mean. It's it's like is Die Hard a Christmas movie? It's the motivation for him being there. It's a Christmas movie. Correct. The whole reason Die Hard happens is because it's Christmas. Yeah. Same thing here. Like this shit's only happening because it's this time of year. Ah, uh, awesome film, dude. I can't even. I don't know. I feel like I'm not giving it enough credit. Yeah, I I can't talk it up. Talk it up enough. Mm-hmm. Like this is the most fun we've had watching 
Like since some, Violet, maybe. Something we haven't seen. Yeah, something we hadn't seen before since, like, Violet Evergarden. Yeah, because I really enjoy Violet, Violet Evergarden. We're gonna it, watch and, like, Hodomiya was tight, but it's not, like, Violet Evergarden. Mm-hmm. Good. You know what I mean? Wow. But Violet Evergarden's like, holy fuck, that's Violet yeah. Evergarden. Yeah. It, it, like, yeah. And that's already, like, February. That's yeah. the first week of February. Damn. That's almost three months ago already. But uh, please give us your suggestions. We'll watch anything if you guys want to talk about your takes or uh, how this fucking anime has made you feel. Just fucking let us know. Mm-hmm. Uh, this has been Between. Nerds. <laughs>